say, if you look at what's happening in politics, and if you work um, particularly in large corporates, and that's what I do now, um, we spend a lot of time doing two things. Uh, first of all, we spend a lot of time saying, well, what we really need is political leadership in this country. And for that country, you can read any country, by the way, um, with the jury out on, on France and fingers crossed. But anywhere else, I defy you. And people who lead get in trouble. I think that is the recent lesson of the German election a little bit and the success of the AFD. And then we say, gosh, the future is very complicated. Find me somebody who's going to tell me what's going to happen. And uh, the, the, the point I really want to make is that what's happening in politics in a macro sense is, is the macro image of what's happening around Brexit and the big problems. What I think is happening is that uh, populations and electorates are seeing governments which are failing to deliver what they would regard as fair, broadly based growth. They've seen a world where increasingly governments seem to have no control whatsoever. They failed to spot the global financial crisis. They've got a kind of sticking plaster solution that may unwind at any moment. And things keep cropping up like ISIS. Go and talk to the governments of the world with highly developed intelligence services and ask them whether they spotted ISIS coming. Absolutely, they did not. Russia and the Crimea? Uh-uh-uh. I could give you example after example after example. So what the world sees and what electorates see and what citizens see, and increasingly well-informed and well-educated young people, is governments who aren't making a great success of governing because they're not delivering societies that, to quote our Prime Minister, work for everyone. It's a great phrase. Um, and they are, they're not very good at what they do because they're unable to see what's coming and when it happens, they don't know what to do about it. Where does that take you? It takes you to uh, populism. We've got some examples. There are obvious examples. It's almost invidious to mention them now. It takes you to the politics of identity, which we've had in this country a bit, but with the most recent and interesting example is in Catalonia. And it takes you to a place where politics, it's the economy, stupid, which uh, was uh, the, the core of a very successful Bill Clinton strategy 25 years ago only. No, it's no longer true. The behavior of the Catalonians is economically irrational. So my point really is that just as when in, in the United Kingdom, our day-to-day -day newspaper's political energy is getting disconnected from the real problems, uh, more broadly, politics, the politics of identity, tribalism, autocracy in lots of places, strongman politics is coming back, it's not a good way of solving problems, by the way, but it's coming back, is getting disconnected from the problems of the future. And governments are not in that space where corporates would like them to be. So, to round this off, um, I, I think the interesting challenge for businesses over the next year and next five years and next ten years will increasingly be how do you run a successful long-term business in a political environment where governments won't be able to provide the regulatory and long-term stability and necessarily the social stability you need and where the resentment of what you're doing because you're successful and people are uncomfortable about the success of business will mean that your legitimacy and uh, your authority and, as it were, your right license to operate in the parlance to carry on running that business will increasingly be called into question. And therefore, companies will no longer be able to do what they very comfortably did when I was, as it were, growing up and learning to work, which is rely on governments to run a world for them, which politically they just could operate in. They will have to become political animals too. And creating their own legitimacy and their own right to be heard and listened to will become part of what they've got to do. And incidentally, if they'd done it in the United Kingdom five years ago, we'd probably have voted to remain. So 
I started with Brexit, I finished with Brexit, but there was some other stuff in the middle. <laughs> Thank you.